Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about the most important document uh, that is prepared for any country and that is about the national security policy. Earlier we used to hear that Pakistan is a security state. Perhaps we used to only consider two major factors. One was about the external threat, one was about the internal threat. But perhaps there are so many other very important components of the security policy that also include uh, your uh, food security, it includes your water security, climate change perhaps, population I would say is another very important factor and so on and so forth. When you get into the details you understand that what exactly is very important for any country and then you accordingly uh, decide about the priorities and then you set out certain standards and then you apply. But now since uh, the government of uh, Pakistan Tariq and Saf under the leadership of uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan they have uh, approved the first Pakistani national security policy. So without getting into further details uh, let's watch this package uh, that the production team has prepared and after that I'll introduce you to our panelists and we'll start the conversation. Highest Forum for Coordination on Security Issues, National Security Committee in its 36th meeting approved the country's first ever national security policy 2022-2026 to on 27th December 2021 and was approved by the Cabinet on 28th December 2021. National Security Advisor Moed Yusuf told that a public version of the national security policy document will be launched by the Prime Minister and released in due course. National Security Committee's 36th meeting was chaired by Prime Minister Imran Khan and attended by Chief of Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa, Advisor to Prime Minister on National Security Moed Yusuf and other senior government and military officials. The National Security Policy 2022-2026 aims at blustering the country's economic security and tackling external as well as internal challenges. National Security Advisor Moed Yusuf highlighted that Pakistan is shifting to a comprehensive national security framework and ensuring the citizen-centric approach to the security. He asserted that to ensure the citizen-centric approach to security, the national security policy put economic security at the core as a stronger economy would create additional resources that would in turn be judicially distributed to further bluster military and human security. Prime Minister Imran Khan said that the security of Pakistan rested on the security of its citizens and reposed confidence that Pakistan is well prepared to meet any internal and external threats. He directed the National Security Advisor Moed Yusuf to present an implementation progress report to the National Security Committee every month. Meanwhile, the revitalization of the Planning Committee and the expansion of National Security Committee advisory board were also unanimously approved by the participants of the meeting. The Prime Minister said a similar focus was needed on human development and called upon the audience to highlight the issues in Pakistan's three-tiered education system. Now to talk about it, we have with us in our studio on my right is uh, Irfan Ghari Saab, who is a senior journalist, columnist and a writer. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. And we also have with us Brigadier Retired Asif Harun Saab, who is a senior analyst. Pleasure to have you, sir, in the program. And on Skype, we have with us Sayyid Muhammad Ali Saab, who is an expert on international relations. Sayyid Muhammad Ali Saab, pleasure to have you in the show, sir. Thank you so much for your time as well. But let me start off from you, Irfan Ghori Saab. Now, the main headline, the punchline, is about the security policy sees economy as pivotal to stability. Now, at the end of the day, sir, whenever we used to talk about the external threats or the internal <coughs> threats and so many other major important components associated with it, sir, now the government has finally i would say realize that economy is the main factor if you have enough money in your kitty sir you have a certain say globally now my point is sir that uh, what took us almost 74 years to realize that perhaps economy is the major factor forgetting about the internal and the external threats which used to be at the top of our priority let's start off from there uh, sir Faisal, thank you very much uh, yes, that is, uh, of course, I mean, it's, uh, we can say that we should have come up with this approach much earlier. But the good thing is that at least we have now realized, and uh, you would recall that almost an year back, uh, the Army Chief, he had made a statement about shifting from geostrategic to geoeconomics. Uh, so that seems 
to be a major you know shift in our approach and uh, whatever the uh, contours of this policy that have uh, come to us till now because uh, uh, the the re, the text of the uh, uh, the policy is yet to be unveiled but it seems that it it has the major focus is that it is citizen centric number one mm -hmm with economy at its core economic security as you said that uh, now in a in a in a modern society you know uh, you, do, you you none of the countries they live in isolation correct and uh, when it comes to you know your relationship with the, with other countries mm -hmm. if as it is being said that economy economic diplomacy would be our our you know focus that is the thing that was much needed and uh, we hope that like uh, other documents that we have been coming uh, we had been uh, unveiling and that that had been coming in the past implementation is the key now mm -hmm. like in the past we had seen that uh, that you would remember we had many programs when a national action plan came but when it came to implementing that plan that was a document that was you know that had a unanimous uh, sort of approval from the parliament and all the stakeholders including the political parties even the opposition parties they were on board here we are coming up uh, with another document and i hope that everybody takes it and then is implementation as uh, you had shown in your package that uh, the prime minister has directed the national security advisor mm -hmm that uh, m that he would have to uh, uh, you know give a monthly report on implementation so it is uh, something that has to be seen that how it is implemented now that holds the key basically implementation as you said so your your take on the same point well the point is first of all let me say that uh, it's unfortunate that for 74 years we didn't have a national security policy it is unforgivable it's a crime particularly when we had such adverse um, external situation and also internal situation. To start with, you know, our foreign policy revolved around US-centric uh, uh, policy or uh, our own security concerns from India mainly and also from Afghanistan. And that's how we trudged along. We never had an independent foreign policy. Now, after or during the war on terror, which kept raging for 20 years, we realized that the existential threat is not from abroad, but from within. And it is the internal threat which is posing the main threat to the security of Pakistan, number one. And now it is realized that it is the economics which matter. Globally also, there has been a shift in this trend. This Asia pivot or the Indo-Pacific pivot also is economic oriented. Correct. As far as China is concerned, for a long time back from 79 onward, it has been concentrating on economy. It has relied more on geoeconomics and it is because of the geoeconomic strategy that today it is the second uh, uh, biggest e uh, economic giant and all set to become a global superpower and the leading economic power. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Joe Biden also realizes that economics now holds the key, but they have somehow uh, kept the two mixed, the adventurism as well as the e economics. It's not a clear, you know, demarcation between the two. They have not, you know, sort of uh, set away with their foreign in intrusions and interventionism policies. As far as Pakistan is concerned, it has finally, uh, uh, you know, come to the conclusion that our economy has always, you know, lurched from one crisis to the another. It has never been a stable country economically. And when you call, uh, talk of security, what is uh, security, na uh, national security? It depends on national cohesion. It depends on social stability. It depends on economic prosperity and then the military strength. 
the military strength alone cannot achieve any objectives internally or externally correct it is the economics which overweighs all others the rest is then easy to follow because if the military muscle has to be used internally or externally it means needs money and we don't have the cash and then you know today we are water scarce we are short of finances our economy is sinking our economic indicators are all uh, all down we are in the grip of the imf the fatf sword is hanging over us and that is how we have realized but this realization has not come today the thing started from 2014 but if we go back i think it was in 2002 when general musharraf you know established national security council and then it was general jangir karamat who floated the idea of national security uh, council for which he was sacked and after his sacking in 2014 then once again you know this national security council came up and national security advisor was appointed and the exercise started on framing the national security uh, policy and it has now taken about 7 years and in this 7 years time a lot of work has been done the security division is fully involved in it and as they claim that 18 ministries have been involved a large number of experts have been involved the military has been involved so it's a joint venture and they have come out with a 100 page comprehensive document outlining that the priority hmm. goes to geo geo economics the, the economic security in which they have outlined that what are those things like economy is one thing in this within this they've gone for agriculture food water uh, water security and health and education and then of course uh, the military factor so based on all this i think they have taken a start and they they claim that they have made an implementation plan also because pakistan always has lacked every time in all the uh, implementation matters as my friend just said about the national action plan action action plan had a 20 point formula it involved the uh, reforms of the judiciary of the madrasas and so many other things nakta was formed there was a national security division and the 23 intelligence uh, setups were supposed to come under one roof this has not been done so far so all this thing implementation we have been very weak and now it is to be seen how you know monthly progress by the national security um, advisor mayid hope he he does it he shows progress and the things carry on all right now coming to you sayed mohammed ali one very important factor so ever since i would say pakistan came into being the security threats that were there for pakistan who always handled by the men in uniform in particular i'm talking about the military so we always thought that uh, when you talk about the national security that particular perspective is always within the domain of the military uh, then i remember one of our very dear friends brigadier kamran who was uh, appointed in the national uh, defense university in fact also presented a paper and that was about the national security uh, policy of pakistan but that was not <coughs> only uh, you know uh, from the military perspective but it had so many other very important components even then economy population uh, external threat internal threat water security food security and so many other factors were also uh, highlighted now talking about this particular document sir uh, where we see the role of the military the role of the agencies 18 other ministries have been included and the experts would be there to look after the affair do you think sir this is going to be a comprehensive uh, document and if followed or the points implemented in the appropriate way could be the way forward this is the actual solution and the remedy your take well i haven't uh, been able to get my hands on the document uh, itself yet however you know this idea of human security is uh, actually you know i say this because i i teach at ed johns hopkins and georgetown universities in dc i i've created and i teach a course called human security uh, right and and it seems that you know this idea of, of the new policy and thinking of 
economics and uh, and more human centric notions of security, right? And hence involving different line departments uh, into you know into constructing the national security policy is informed by this broader debate, right? And 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 you know the imperative to think not only when you think of security to not only think of a strong military, right? because I mean North Korea has a pretty strong military, but the people are starving. Right. And um, countries like the U.S., I, I think the U.S. allocates what something like 11 percent of its uh, GDP to, uh, you know, to its military. And it's got the largest military in the world, but it's got a very large economy. So despite having the largest military and spending you know, trillions of dollars on the military, uh, proportionately it spends less money than Pakistan does. Right. I mean, I think we spend something like 15 percent. So it's good that, uh, you know, the, the idea of security might be broadened because here, you know, within the country, I mean, we have, I mean, if you look at now air pollution, God knows how many people are going to be killed, uh, you know, because of uh, this burden of air pollution in, in major cities. like all, Right. I mean, we have things like uh, pandemics, not only COVID, but dengue. Right, we have water diseases have been, you know, through the decades have been killing people. I mean, things like dysentery and diarrhea are killing, uh, you know, uh, have been causing a major economic dent, right? Because when you have, uh, it's not only mother and child mortality, right? It's also uh, uh, hours and hours of labor lost. So, I mean, you can even think of it in economic terms. Uh, you know, which which then uh, undermines the ability of our economy to perform. So I think while the idea of shifting from you know just our location and banking on that to trying to harness that for productivity is a good one, I think we have to be realistic. I mean, we cannot compare ourselves to China. I mean, if you look at China's economic growth rate for decades and our current growth rate, uh, you know, there's a vast difference between the two. Secondly, it's not only it's not only about economic growth because if I mean we go back to our golden days of the 1960s and the 1970s, where uh, it's under the Ayub Khan government, Pakistan had very impressive economic growth. But we were not managing that economic growth; it was not trickling down. Right. So and, and it's not only Pakistan's fault. I mean, it's also the economic models that we were following. I mean, uh, the U.S. is quick to point fingers at China for its predatory lending around the world, including in Pakistan. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of the market mechanisms that even the World Bank and the IMF use uh, have uh, have uh, tended to, you know, uh, encourage uh, more elite-led growth. You know, that remains a problem for upsided economies, um, you know, uh, like our own. And and even if you look at the global economy, we see an increasing concentration of wealth in the hands of what the one percent, right, where and lingering disparity. I mean, we still live in a world where two billion plus people don't have you know, the basic, very basic necessities. So thinking, reframing these uh, this, this idea of security and making it more human-centric is good. But is it going to go beyond paper? You know, I mean, that, that remains a question. All right. Now, another important factor is so since uh, there's a very common saying that, you know, you need to have healthy and educated nation in order mm -hmm. to progress. So, <clears throat> Well, as far as uh, health is concerned, I think government has taken a lot of initiatives recently, mm -hmm. health card program and so on and so forth. Uh, when it comes to education, I still remember that the goal of uh, Pakistan was perhaps to increase the GDP for uh, uh, education uh, a little over 4%. I don't know whether that has been done or not, but this was the aim. Perhaps it should have been 8% in order to have, because we are looking at a huge chunk of youth. Uh, you can't afford them. Uh, you know, to be uneducated, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps when you compare it uh, with modern countries like USA or European, you know, their standards of education yes. is very different. We do understand we are working on that. But sir, at the end of the day, what I have realized over a period of time is that uh, the kinetic approach versus the non-kinetic approach, 
I mean, this was another issue. You know, having uh, thousands of tanks yes. is not going to provide you that kind of a security, which a decent number as far as GDP is concerned uh, would do. Now, sir, let's do dissection. Let's start off for population because that is one of the most ignored, yes. uh, I think, um, area. And that is perhaps <coughs> one of the most important as well, sir. Look at the number. We are not even sure whether it, we are 220 million or 260 yes. million, but at least we know that we are among the top six yeah. countries in the world, sir. Now, looking at the population, sir, primarily uneducated, undernourished, let me put yes. it that way also, sir. Stunt. Uh, when you talk about the clean drinking water, that is something which is very precious, scarce rather. Uh, you talk about uh, the rest of the factors, we'll get there, sir, because if there is a population bomb, obviously it is going to put pressure on agriculture, on water, even the air quality. Everything is linked in one yes. way or the other. Lahore has been declared as the worst city in the world as far as air quality index is concerned, sir. Lahore is the, in as, another, uh, you know, it has the, <laughs> you know, another record also where people misuse water yeah. at the highest level in the world, sir. Talking about the rest is right in front of you. Yes. I'm just going to give you an example, sir. I think social aspect is also very important. How to teach people, how to guide people, how to make them understand that water is not going to be available. Look at the historic perspective. Last 15, 20 years, the water table uh, has gone down. Uh, your requirement because the population is multiplying, that has gone up. So that could be the problem. And again, that is directly linked with your agriculture. Yes. We haven't done any progress uh, as far as per acre, acre yield is concerned, sir, still stuck in the old school of thought. Mm. So don't you think there are so many other areas where you really need to work hard, train people, and then obviously it is going to have uh, an accumulated effect on the economics. Yes, Faisal, uh, for any policy to succeed, you know, it has to be, first, first thing is, as you have uh, narrated, I agree with you on all these points. Uh, for uh, to, to have a policy that will become successful, the main thing is that it should be inclusive and participatory and the people own it. And it is not, I mean, uh, not that a document, you know, we had so many documents in the past as well, but the thing is that how to implement, it's not just like, you know, okay, you write something that we would be doing something about the population bomb, I would call it a population bomb because uh, as you have mentioned many of our pro problems, had we been, you know, a nation of maybe 150 million people, the situation would, have been, would different. have been different. You have mentioned about, you know, the pollution issue. Yes, the number of cars you have been seeing, you know, I mean, every year you have been, because, you know, uh, with the, though we have economic uh, uh, issues, but still our middle class is growing and uh, the people, and more and more people you would have to feed as well. So your food security on one hand is, yes, the progress on, on in agriculture sector, the development and the latest technology that you adopt in the, that sector and at the same time how many mouths you have to feed. So Correct. these all things are, are important. But at the same time I think what is missing right now is that even today when we are discussing that policy, none of our panelists, we know the exact, you know, it, it should have been an open argument and, and uh, the government has been saying that we have consulted I think 600 people or something 600 like that. 600 experts. experts. Experts, I mean, your parliament is there, your political parties are there, the civil society is there, and even the media. So, uh, on 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 uh, you know on the face, as what have uh, we have you know what we have come to know so far, those aspects that we all agree here that the human security, the economic security, the military security. I mean, these are the broader things. But now it comes. How would we be implementing it when it comes to, you know, your population growth, as you have said, your food security, your, uh, I mean, this, uh, the pollution issues. Similarly, when it comes to extremism, you know, recently we had, uh, we had another document when, you know, the recent uh, extremist uh, uh, incidents took place. Uh, we had been having those documents, but when it comes to how it is. That is also related to education. Yes, and your curriculum as well, yeah, you know, absolutely. your curriculum, when in your curriculum, what has been taught, it is very controversial. And uh, similarly, when 
it comes to you know tackling extremism as we have discussed and we had been discussing uh, earlier the hate speech the tolerance against you know the extremist uh, tendencies and the result that we had been seeing is that incident after incident there is you know something uh, when some uh, glory sort of incident comes up and we we come up with far fighting we have some uh, programs on it and then on the ground the things get normal i i will not be you know mentioning it, i mean the particularly but some you know there had been some incidents in in this country where the police force that had been deputed for some specific person uh, specific purpose their li lives were lost and recently i mean the see that recent incident uh, in, in in you know when uh, a political party they were coming to islamabad for implementation for what they called implementation of their demands though their demands whatever i mean uh, um, the way the government uh, tackled them uh, that is something you know that had uh, i don't know what would be the morale of those policemen who had the who had lost lives and then you clinched an agreement with them so and many of those people who had been apprehended on those charges i mean they were just uh, uh, released on the basis no of you know just with one stroke of pen and that is not the way you know if you want if you are really serious to bring a change then implementation we say implementation it should be seen on the ground it is not on the papers only that if uh, you know national security advisor or your interior minister or your official and you know one more thing sorry to cut you sir one has to keep away the political motives uh because yes. at the end of the day you know these are not the popular decisions come on man it is more about your country rather than a certain political party who can uh, support you in the upcoming elections or not that yes, is so that's why important. i'm saying it should be participatory you know and mm. uh, uh, it should be you know inclusive because unless you do not take on board all the stakeholders and you you know when it comes to economy uh, we all have been saying that there should be a charter on of you know economy in this country that what come what may but we would be you know following these 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 things that's correct but one uh, you know uh, the the, uh, the situation on ground is that in last 3 years rather but if you see in last 20 years i think we would be having same faces coming again and again from different parties that means that there is something wrong that we are we not able to in a, in a country of uh, 220 or 221 people or 22 uh, people we we are not able to come up with you know some new faces who can you know bring some substantial change in it so that is uh, something i think we should consider now now because sir another important factor since you know population we just talked about health and uh, education is also related to it sir global warming and climate change that is perhaps the biggest threat at the moment sir not for only pakistan because we are also considered among the top 6 7 countries who will get affected at some stage if you look at the numbers and the way uh, things have been happening over a period of time so it's very very alarming uh, weather pattern has changed uh, you talk about the monsoons uh, they are shifting towards uh, the west look at the recent uh, spell there is no rain uh, i mean it's so dry people are getting sick and all but the point is sir that uh, don't you think that it is also very very important to educate our youth in particular sir the future generations that are what i call that look this is what the future is going to look like better get prepared now rather than when things will be beyond control i agree you know uh, climate uh, is now among the top priority items in the world and thank god that after clint uh, trump joe biden is now thinking on the right direction and he has agreed to participate in the global uh, climate uh, uh initiatives that the world has taken and fortunately pakistan is also among the very enthusiastic participant having realized that this is very important and some initiatives have already been taken but as far as the youth is concerned and education is concerned the youth requires too much of education and direction the ones who are at the helm of affairs or the seniors the elders starting from your homes or your teachers schools colleges universities we are not the guides we are not giving them the right kind of training and that is the reason that our youth today is wandering in apathy they are directionless 
they are getting disillusioned. They are seeing and they are going toward materialism, to, toward the rat race, toward the crimes and such like things rather than towards the constructive channels. And this is the leadership, the system which has to bring about a healthy change in a country, in a society and that starts from the schools and uh, mohallas and districts and, and uh, uh, provinces, etc, etc. So education when we talk of that I think is uh, so far in a deplorable state. Uh, madrasas are having more uh, students than the government schools or the yeah. uh, elite schools because there's free boarding, lodging and everything. And then what kind of training is taking place and what kind of brainwashing has <coughs> happened there. Not that you know the elite school are uh, giving very good uh, you know, training. They are equally... Talk about the quality of education. Quality of education mm -hmm. is very poor. And you rightly said, so till recent it was 2.7% and that 2% uh, of the national budget, that was also half of it was eaten up in corruption. And what was left? Because our elites yeah, have of course, never schools in Sindh and Balochistan and no, even in Punjab. It's deplorable there, you know, go schools and, you ghost know, teachers. the schools uh, turn <laughs> into the buffalo dens and such Absolutely. like and such like. It is happening in this country and we have not done anything about it. No one has ever been punished for these kind of things. Is right. it about the character of the nation also, sir? You see, I, I will be uh, talking on this thing that we have talked so much of this national security and all that and all that. We have missed one very important factor of ideological reformation. Without ideological reformation, what is your economy? How can your economy be set right if your morality is not good? You, you have no character. You are dishonest. You are cheat. You are cutthroat. And this is what is happening today. Everyone wants to, you know, snatch others' rights, grab land and uh, uh, get rich in one day whether by force or hook or cook. So on that aspect, that is a danger to the youth. The youth has got misled. They have to be brought on the right channels. How? Through ideological reformation, right from the schools. The curriculum has to add this factor of ideological reformation, building of the character. As Kaidi Azam also had said in every speech, character building, you know, steadfastness. Your honesty, discipline, There's no, this, this nation has become indisciplined. This is what is more important and worrying for us. 60% and above are the youth below 30 years. They are, they are an asset for us if used correctly. But they are, they, they are not being utilized. Demographic dividend versus demographic disaster. Disaster. This is what is happening. So, my dear... The point is that these uh, economics and all this and all this, just education, no. We have to go to the roots. That how now to take a start? We have to take a start, it will take 10 years, 20 years, you know, to build uh, the uh, youth on the right lines. For that, we have to make a start. No start, no thought on that process. That is very unfortunate. We have to do it. Indeed. And we have to do it very urgently. Because in my humble view, whatever plans you have made, you say the best of the plan will fail. If you have no will to do it, you have no character and, and you and are no capacity and to, no capacity that to do it. That is also very important. And an average plan can succeed if you have the sincerity of purpose and honesty. I think, sir, one should always keep those plans in place which are, uh, you know, which you can implement. And then at the end of the day, they, they can be, they could be, done and implemented in an appropriate way because if I give you a, a document, let's say 500 word, uh, pages or something, but that cannot be implemented. So it's a useless document. You have to also understand and do the SWOT analysis of your own nation, sir. Where do we have strengths? Where are the weaknesses? Let's uh, try to capitalize on your strengths and let's try to minimize your weaknesses. Then you have threats, then you have opportunities. There's so much linked uh, now, let me go to Sayyid Muhammad Ali. Sayyid Muhammad Ali, one important factor uh, which always existed even in the Second World War, even in the First World War, that was about the image building of any nation. Sir, so, again, a comparison goes to India. 
whether we like it or we don't, that shining India, that uh, secular India, that uh, moving India, uh, so-called India, uh, or, you know, the kind of impression they have uh, given to the world is not what actually India is, but this is what people believe India is. At the same time, it's the other way around when it comes to Pakistan. We haven't been able to really focus on our image or rather the brand building. Uh, we do talk about that our um, ambassadors and the other staff sitting abroad in various embassies and high commission should do this. Have, nothing has been done. Still the old school of thought prevails there, sir. Now it's more about economics. It, it's more about uh, businesses. Look at the trade between China and Taiwan despite the fact that they have a dispute. Look at the trade between USA and uh, China or India or China perhaps. See, this is what the modern economy is all about. Keep your differences aside, do trade. So that is the kind of strength uh, is there when we talk about economy. So image building. And then there were so many uh, disinfo centers where Pakistan was maligned. But that's the way it is, sir. Over the last 25 years, everything has changed. Internet has taken over. Everybody is holding uh, a digit, uh, you know, a, a typical uh, uh, gadget which is digital, which you can use for any purpose. Yes, sir, we do understand the importance of this. But don't you think this is the way forward now? And the modern techniques should be in place rather than that old school of thought, which is pretty much useless now. Sayyid Muhammad Ali. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> it's interesting to hear this uh, you know, discussion which has brought about different uh, issues to the fore. But, you know, I mean, when it comes to uh, notions like character building, I mean, these are, you know, quite loaded terms, uh, right? And I mean, we can we can take any one of these issues. I mean, education. Um, you know, uh, I mean, even our own conception of what we are, right? And these are all debatable issues. I mean, for some people, Pakistan was created when Muhammad bin Qasim, you know, came to this part of the world when he came to sin, right? And and that's the the kind of uh, Pakistan that they want to see. And, uh, you know, uh, ideologically, it's not like everyone in this country is on the same page. So I feel hesitant, you know, trying to um, trying to sort of comment on, on those types of issues when we're thinking of, you know, uh, sort of amplifying our image. What kind of an image do we want to amplify? Because when we accentuate a particular character, uh, of the nation, and you know, here we can think of ethnicity, we can think of sect, we can think of class, we can think of gender, uh, uh, and on all these issues, it's not like the rest of the world um, uh, has act together. But you know, even if you look at Bangladesh, right, in which was a part of Pakistan until 1971, look gender indicators, if you look at per capita income, if you look at education levels, they have now superseded us. So it one really wonders, uh, you know, yes, India might be doing a better marketing job, and I'm certainly no fan of the ethno-nationalism that India is currently in the game of. Uh, but, I mean, you know, the, the, the lynching in Seattle court doesn't help Right? I mean, if you look at critique of the single national curriculum now, right? I mean, so I, I don't know if, you know, all, all of Pakistan is on, on the same page. And we have shrinking amount of uh, tolerance for the opinion of the other. So I think before we, you know, I think ultimately what nation can do is, you know, project the, the diversity of opinion. Right. Uh, uh, I, I think that is a, a past habit that I think we need to inculcate because yes, Mohammed bin Qasim came to sin, then there were the you know the, the Khilji dynasty and then Mughals, but there was a lot of other stuff that also happened in the Indian subcontinent. I mean, there was also Harappa, there was also Hindustan. So I think 
you know, in terms of the the recognition of culture, right? I mean, when one stays away from here, and I mean, it's not to say that uh, I mean the U.S. is some utopian land, and a lot of the social welfare mechanisms that they put in place have perhaps you know derived from wealth that they accumulated imperialism, and the same goes for you know the uh, European colonial powers. The disparities in our country are stark, right? The classism. I mean, we talk about the caste system in India, but you know, I mean, one looks at the kind of disparities that we see within our own country. They are also extremely problematic. The rigidity when it comes to gender norms, right? I mean, it's not to say that we have to strive to Western notions of feminism. Uh, there's, I mean, it's upsetting to see. Tolerance and it's upsetting. You know, you know, if you're talking about the rat race, I mean, this, the, the profusion of, um, of shopping plazas, and I, mean, I, I, I don't want to depress the audiences, but I, I think that, you know, I mean, on all these issues, there is there's a lot of self reflection that, you know, we need to do here in Pakistan. And being a development anthropologist by training, uh, you know, I mean, these are the kinds of issues that, you know, one deliberates on. I mean, international relations is more of a side hobby for me. But I by agree. training, I'm a development anthropologist, right, who looks at the encounter uh, between people and, and, and the specialty for economic growth and progress. So... Uh, no, I wish I had some straight answers for you. These are complex problems, and some of them have been compounded exactly. also by. Exactly, I don't assess right? that easy uh, because uh, it will require a lot of effort, a lot of dedication, a lot of uh, hard work. I would say, uh, a lot of uh, you know opposition members would uh, really roar at it. And interestingly, even this time, the opposition has boycotted this. And the interesting part is that you know one has to understand that Pakistan is not only for one single particular political party. Everyone needs to be together. There should be proper brainstorming. If you really want to keep it going for another five years, God knows who's going to be in power uh, after the upcoming election. And if it is totally ruled out and uh, back to square one, then it won't carry any value. But I understand, Sayyid Muhammad Ali Sahib, you have to go. So we'll uh, <coughs> say goodbye to you and thank you so much uh, for your presence, sir. We'll see you, inshallah, soon. Coming back to you now, so quick couple of points. So one is about, uh, obviously, you have to set certain goals, certain guidelines. We do understand that. Uh, and then everybody should be in alignment with, with the overall objective of that. Couple of points, sir. One was about, uh, that was something which is very important because so whenever you go out, uh, whether you talk about the suburbs or even the city, sir, the waste management, it is so bad that um, God knows what is happening. So forget about the... Pakistani contribution as far as waste is concerned or uh, as pollution is concerned. But but having said that, sir, uh, this is going to be another problem which has already become a problem. You talk about the cutting of trees, sir. Uh, that has resulted in, in drastic changes yes. in the weather and otherwise also. Uh, you talk about so many other factors where the government has to put it, puts it, you know, they really have to put their foot down and to make sure that, you know, this is not repeated. It is going on. You you just go on the Savat road yeah. and you start counting the trucks carrying the logs. Honestly speaking, these are all smugglers carrying that uh, everywhere because there is a lot of demand of uh, wooden furniture in Pakistan. So there are so many aspects. What do you think, sir? One has to understand. And another very important factor, sir, uh, that is about the agriculture. Uh, when as kids we used to uh, read that you know cotton uh, or, or perhaps wheat and rice these are bumper crops now we are importing everything sir so there has to be something wrong somewhere uh, even the oil palm oil i mean you yes. talk about the import bill sir why can't we have those refineries in pakistan so i mean there is so much you can do and it just requires common sense and perhaps that is something which is not not common Faisal, uh Interestingly, you know, you would be amazed. I don't, I don't know if uh, you know it or not. Uh, what we call dale, lentils. Yeah. Eighty percent of them they are imported. Do you know that? Honestly, this is speaking, what I have been told no by uh, people in uh, National uh, Agriculture. Uh, this is NARC. Eighty percent of our dale, they are we are importing it. 
similar is because the people case are getting tenders the, and they're making and, and billions and out of it so uh, and this is the story uh, what you were referring i think uh, what brigadier sahab was also referring was you know when it comes to you know discipline you know uh, uh, discipline or you know when it comes to the character of of a nation why this is important you mentioned about the garbage you know what usually our trend is that you you know usually in our uh, in our villages in our towns in most of our cities uh you do cleanliness at your home whatever the garbage you have you throw it outside, outside. you know that means your mentality is you are throwing that garbage to the whole community but you do not realize that similarly when it goes to you know when you 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 go on the on the road and you would see that nobody is uh, nobody is ready to give you a little space to you know make your way because everybody seems to be in such a hurry this is because we have uh, we have not uh, it's, it's it's all about the mindset actually so you have to to do this that shows uh, the, the selfishness sir selfishness of mindset of the people that everybody you know even a the person to understand you know, the nation a, a taxi driver a, you know he's uh, he would be seen as you know the person who is the most busiest person when it comes to the you know on the road so these are very minute things that show character of a nation so to change that you have to change those mindsets and for that and sir schools, that cannot be your, changed your, your, your overnight sir that will require that is, a lot of time yes it's not only the government it's hmm. it's it needs to be changed at at your you know household level at at every family level at your schools in your society unless you do not change ch- change that similar is this is the situation of you know sentimentalism in our in our society whatever when it comes to religious senti- sentimentalism you know the people would be sentimental on things without knowing the like uh, i mean it's a very controversial topic when but it was like you know when it was a demand that you sever ties a diplomatic ties with uh, france or uh, european union or certain country or certain country look at saudi arabia uh, that's what i'm saying huh. that we are so sentimental similarly we you know we believe that Because whatever we are, we are saying that, that is the only the that is the only yes. when we have uh, nothing Uh, of that sort and secondly we do not have that kind of info neither we are educated neither we are qualified just because you know we all love our prophet we all do of course but that doesn't that mean that we should start uh, killing people for no rhyme reason and you know for our own personal uh, uh, i would say ambitions anyway sir your your final uh, closing remarks from you sir i would um, in my closing remarks i would say that 50 years have lapsed that we lost east pakistan and they are celebrating today and we have yet not learnt lessons what had happened in east pakistan was that the bengalis who were in the forefront to to create pakistan yes, in matter of 24 years their ha- minds were filled with so much of hatred that they hated everything best pakistani and they befriended their oppressors and with their help they got they uh, created bangladesh and look where they are now right and again they are progressing right now we have not learned lessons whatever the pollution of minds had been done in east pakistan what is happening today in all the smaller provinces their minds have again been subverted we see provincialism on the rise we go to interior sin we go to urban sin we go to balochistan we go to keep kp even in punjab for the first time you know such kind of slogans have been raised so this is a very dangerous trend which has come up and this is i think a very big threat that has created and along with it what is happening the hybrid war we talk of hybrid war and in this national security we haven't mentioned it my god this is you know such an enlarged kinetic and non kinetic forces hybrid war it's a battle of minds which is taking the sting out of you they're taking the element of resistance and jihad from you they're snatching the weapons from you and we are not talking of that we are not you know thinking on I that, that is how, the how, threat, how, how the to the strengthen day. our minds and face uh, those you know Rest onslaught comes later. And, and then the cultural invasion which is hitting our ideological uh, moorings this is you know hitting our social fabric so if you have an enemy which is stronger than you are yeah. i mean let's give the devil his due why not 
Russell, let's have a you know another program on that. I, th I think yeah, really yeah, because you know that's, yeah, sir. Mean, that's very uh, yeah. I mean, uh, in fact, this is, this is a very very comprehensive subject, sir. Yeah, I right. think we'll definitely do another show, or a couple of shows, a series of shows in yes. different aspects. Under but aspect, thank yeah. you so much, Professor, for your presence. It was a pleasure having you, Orissa. Thank you. And that's all we have for this. Our I'll see you inshallah tomorrow at eight to five. Till then, you take good care. Good office.